that great gift for casting the right person. That's why I recognize how good Lynn was going to be. And that that she, <coughs> but, but no, but he was really wonderful about that. And Frank told a story uh, on Wednesday, too, that I learned a lot from Bill. I'm sure it's all of remember this. Is that the one of the that there's a David Freeman story that I told. But there's also, Bill taught us how to listen to each other. And this is something, I mean, I've been through school with Stephen and I were in the same program together. We had wonderful teachers, Fred was fantastic. But when we got to Toronto, having Bill put these things into practice was so valuable. And he would say, we're going to take time now to really listen to each other. And we would sit opposite each other. Just, you know, there's an acting exercise that we've probably done, where you, you just sit there very, and you, you, you look at your script, and you get the line in your head, and then you look at the other actor, and you deliver your line without any acting involved. You deliver it. And that actor takes the time to listen, See how it hits them here, gut, and then they look down and they get the next line and they answer you. The, the emotions or whatever you were feeling, he demanded absolute honesty. And we would do this for hours and it was, it was exhausting but it was thrilling at the same time. So that you listened, you listened not just with your ears, you listened with your stomach. That we listened to each other, what's happening, what, what's happening from here, and that grounded all of us. The audience that. Well, I think there's a couple of things. I, you know, there's different kinds of techniques. Uh, I've never seen it, but Peter Brook has a technique where he gives everybody a 15 foot long stick. And uh, there is no dialogue, there's no words exchange, but they play with those sticks for long periods of time. And what they're doing is attuning themselves to each other, they're sensitizing, sensitizing themselves to each other. And you must have that on stage. If you don't, you have nothing. No matter what marvelous fireworks you can produce, um, you might have that. Um, but uh, no, I forgot what I was going to say. Um, no, it's not. Well, do you want to, oh, sorry. Do you want to mention go on? You mentioned the other day about um, uh, sort of uh, rhythm and some of the questions that you had, or the things that you were working in the theater. champion that 
movement back to grassroots where we start going back to storytelling and not special effects, I think, as actors, too. I mean, I'm going, what's next? Like, synthesbians? As, you know, Avatar? There we go. We're not even going to really be seen anymore. So let's take it, let's turn it back in. I think it's our responsibility to go, let's go back to those playwrights who are writing about character and stop pushing that envelope so far that, hey, for one, for most of us, it's not even affordable. Um, whereas in the Tarragon days, hey, I don't know what Mallory the ticket price was, but you know, I mean, I know inflation and that although, you know, our salaries are still the same. Yeah. <laughs> And 
And uh, I, I just think it's, I, I'm with Lynn, I just think it's outrageous. And the, the, usually the more money, not always, but pretty well as a rule of thumb, the more money, the more heartless the work. <laughs> <laughs> but also, I, I think, think that might be true. I think, yeah, but I mean, you look at, you look at what Penn State is trying to do now, and they're, they're definitely trying to do something different. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and he's definitely, I, I'm yeah. sure he would say he's serving the art form. But it's going to take. It's going to take it's a long time before yeah, more that more. audience finds that. Yeah. And it, it's not easy. I don't think you, you can't oh, do it. Yeah. Oh, oh, if, we're, if we're talking about like uh, audience and the kind of the kind of audiences that have been drawn to the to the big musicals and the big uh, movies and that kind of thing, my wonder is is um, if that kind of theater, that kind of experience, doesn't have something at its core that's just a little bit alienating and hollow. You know, you know what I mean? Like because you can't really connect with it in a way. So my, what I'm hoping, and just maybe this audience in the '70s was different for whatever reasons I created it. But I, 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 I wonder if you could speak to the hope that this kind of alienation that we receive from this inundation of of excess is kind of making people crave a more personal connection with the work, whatever the work is, storytelling or dance or, you that's know, whatever. That's just right. more personal so connection. Right. Look at what, the, yeah. look at what the, the revival of the, all those 1970 scripts uh, from Terrebonne mm -hmm. have told that. They yeah. brought them in all yeah. over again. I mean, they have yeah. had an enormous success with those revivals. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I do think, yeah, I think you're right. But after a while, it's and not just a pocketbook. And also, I think too. I, I think too. It's it's. You're in theater school now, and it's it, your stories we want to hear now too. We want to hear about you guys, and I think we all. And you probably want to hear about our stories too. There's, there's so much intergenerational creativity happening, which is very exciting for my generation. I was there once, but what's wonderful is this openness about your generation towards our experience, and also hopefully us towards you. Is that your stories have to come out of where, what what you want to talk about, and that's going to be exciting. That's what we want to do. Is that something that drove you guys when you were starting all of this off? Like, there were these bigger shows going on like there are right now, but there wasn't there wasn't the simplicity that I kind of get. Yeah, it was a party. I don't know if it was a Maybe some of it wasn't conscious that much. Yeah. Um, I mean, we did have one idea, which is there's, there's got to be some scripts out there that have never been produced anywhere that are probably all right. <laughs> yeah, that's right, okay. yeah. Because, you know, what was available was uh, Shakespeare and Shaw and whatever had been the latest boom, boom on Broadway, you know? Um, so that was, the I that was the essential idea. And we didn't know whether true or not. Okay. Um, but it's interesting that, to mention the alienation. It seems to be one of the functions of theater. The ancient function of theater is it, 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 to instruct and amuse and entertain. Um, but I think one of the functions of theater is also to heal. And, and I think it can do that. I think the best theater does do that. Um, I think people come to the theater, to answer your question, uh, partly in the hope that they will be healed. And I, God forbid me, I don't mean to sound like an evangelist, but you know? Yeah. Um, and, and when that happens, and it does happen, and uh, it doesn't mean you've got an audience full of demented people either. Um, or sick people. But when that happens, or or sick people. <laughs> when that happens, it really does happen. And, and the kind of gratitude you can receive, which is Yeah. Uh -huh. 